motivation is a very important part of life. It's ultimately what drives us to achieve a particular goal. So take our motivation, for example, to join this competition. What motivates me is the fact that I get to present in front of honorable judges today. What motivates him is the fact that he gets to socialize with beautiful girls in the competition. And what motivates her is the fact that she will get to grow over the, comp over the period of this one week. So what does it really mean? This means that the motives behind each of us that drives us to achieve a particular goal may be slightly different. And so as a firm, it is very important that you are able to create the right incentive program that directly relates to each of these motives. And today, we're here to help Gravity Payment design such intensive program. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brevet Sara. This is Pakapon, Siwa Wo, Pungra, and together we're from Thomasad University. As consultant, our goal today is to help Gravity Payment ensure a successful payment scheme as well as grow externally. So let's take a look at where we are today and where we want to be. Currently, your company is a credit card processing company who is struggling to manage pay and ex as well as expand its operations. However, looking forward, your company will become a company that ensures a wider compensation of uh, wider compensation equality as well as maintain a successful growth through our strategies. And to bridge this gap, we present to you our triple E strategy of enrich, engage, and enable. <coughs> our enrich strategy will focus on using monetary and non-monetary compensation schemes to incentivize the employees. Our engage strategies focus on aligning the interests of all key stakeholders. And lastly, our enable strategy will focus on securing a, success, securing a sustainable financing source for the company. But first, let's take a step back and look at the analysis that forms our strategy. So we see that in 2015, the company has increased the minimum wage payment to over $70,000 annually. This affects the company both externally and internally. When we take a look at the external parties that are affected, it includes the customers, the competitors, the shareholders, and the CEO. And internally, we see that it affects the employees and the opportunity of the company to expand <coughs> further. But when we take a look at the problems that are affecting these parties, we see that we could simplify these problems into three key main problems. Of first, we see that we have to answer the question of how to ensure fair equality payment to incentivize the employees. Secondly, we have to answer how to align the key interests of the stakeholders. And lastly, how can we best manage our funding sources? And with this, we present to you our triple E strategy of enrich, engage, and enable. So enrich is a strategy where we're looking to design the right incentive program for your employees, both the monetary and the non-monetary. So first, let's take a look at that profile. These are high collar workers aged between 25 to 50, and their incentive varies quite a lot. They value things like career growth as well as competitive pay. So in this strategy, we would like to design both the monetary and the non-monetary program for these employees, where the key questions for the monetary is how to design the right monetary program that will ensure equal pay across the firm. For the non-monetary incentive, however, it's about designing the right non-monetary program that would help best incentivize them. So let's first take a look at the monetary incentive. Now in designing the right monetary incentive, we believe that there are three key steps. First, we need to be able to understand all the options. Second, we need to select the right options targeting into different uh, employees within the firm. And finally, we want to take a look at the implementations of rolling out this incentive program. So let's first take a look at what are the available options out there. In fact, we believe that there are four key options. First, the salary. Second, the commission. Third, the bonus. And finally, the stock option. 
to take it a step further, we have analyzed these four options by analyzing its pros and cons. Base salaries are in fact simple. The pros is the fact that we must be able to maintain a competitive pay. The cons, however, is that uh, this would uh, the pay to these employees would then have to be, uh, in, instead of being injected back to the, the company, it must be paid to its employees and did not reward the employees for its individual performance. Second, we take a look at commissions. The pros is the fact that these reward employees based on individual performance. The cons is the fact that it didn't create the unity. Third option, the bonus. The pros is very clear. You'll be able to create unity as bonus are paid on the company's performance. But the cons is the fact that it does not reward employees based on their individual performance. And finally, the stock options a rather long-term incentive where I want in to incentivize employees like the management to be invested in the long-term success of the company. So understanding these four options, let's take a look at the second key step in terms of choosing the right options for the right employees. So here we have listed out four types of employees. First is the sales team. Second is the customer relationship team. Third is the product development team, and finally is the management themselves. Now, to take it a step further, we need to really understand what is their key performance indicator. So for example, for the sales team, the key performance indicators will be in terms of the customer acquired. For the customer relationship, it's both in terms of customer satisfaction and customer's retention. For the third employees type the product development that will be in terms of the numbers of product they're able to come up with and the quality of each of those products. And finally, the management, that will be the overall financial performance. Understanding these performance indicators of each of the employees type have allowed us to choose and select the right incentive options for each of them. So here we believe that for the sales team, a base salary plus with a commission is the perfect incentive plan. For both customer relations and product development, we believe that that's a combination of uh, base salary as well as bonuses. And finally, for the management, man, management team, as, they invest, as we want to incentivize them to be invested in the long-term solution of a company, a stock options will be a good addition to their base salary. So that, the, that is the second step in terms of option selection. Finally, we take a look at the implementation where in fact we believe there are three key steps. First, we will need to be able to set the right target for each of these employees. For example, we want to set a target that for the sales team, they must be able to create a certain amount of sales. Secondly, we want to be able to establish a range. For example, if they do better than the target of set, how much will we reward them? If they do worse than the target of set, how much will we reward them? And finally, we want to make sure that we have put in place a system that will, be a, that will enable us to have this ongoing evaluation of their performance. And so those are the three key steps that would help us derive the right incentive prog program in terms of the mo monetary incentive. Next, we take a look at the non-monetary incentive, where in fact we believe that there are three key things we would like to do. First is in terms of career path. What we realized was the fact that career path for gravity payment is not clear at all. Therefore, we want to focus on the vertical growth that employees can go through. And we want to make sure that each of our employees un truly understands the career path ahead of them. What we realized was the fact that it's not just about vertical growth, it's also about horizontal growth. In other words, we want to promote the job rotation where employees can switch between the various departments in order to help incentivize them as well as to help gain the several different skills acquired throughout the company. And finally, we want to introduce the, a proactive feedback integration program, where first, we want to be able to obtain the feedback for employees. We then want to analyze this data and then come up with an implementation plan to help uh, integrate the feedback back to the employees themselves. And so those three are our non-monetary incentive program. So what have we done through our first strategy of Enrich? We have given you the monetary incentive program where it's a combination of three things. Knowing your options, 
selecting the right options, and having the right implementation plan. We have also given you three non-monetary incentive programs, the job rotations, the career path, and the feedback integration program. So that is our first strategy of Enrich. Now we want to take a look at the second strategy, the second strategy that aims to target the other remaining stakeholders. So for our second strategy of Engage, this is where we're looking to align the interests across all stakeholders. So first, we have to take a step back and understand who they are. Here we have identified four stakeholders relevant to this business, particularly your business facing this issue. First being the customer, the shareholders, the CEO of the company, and lastly, the competitors. Further, we take a step further to analyze both positive and negative effects as well as the ability to mitigate these stakeholders in order to craft the right strategy. So here we have for customer, the positive effect of our decision to raise the pay is it promotes a positive ethical perception as we are being built an ethical firm helping to boost an equal pay across the US. However, the negative, on, the negative effect on these customers is they perceive our company as we would be increasing the fee charging to these customers in order to grow and to sustain this rising pay. We also identify the ability to mitigate for this stakeholder as well. Looking further with regards to the shareholder, the perception or the positive effect is pretty similar. They perceive our company as an ethical firm. However, the negative effect is first, it signals a lack of growth engine because we're increasing the pay without informing them of the growth prospect of the company. Second of all, it also intrigues a lawsuit filed by the minority shareholder. Moving on, as for the CEO themselves, the positive effect of this campaign to raise the pay is publicity as well as ensuring that the company is following the government policy in ensuring a payment gap. However, the negative effect we found is given those lots of amount of publicity, they find himself in the position of lack of commitment or time to really monitor on these employees. Lastly, with regards to the competitors, the positive effect here is it's able to help them raise the industry standard in closing out the gap of the equal pay. However, the negative effect on them is it hurt the bottom line as they have to, as they have to increase their payment in order to bridge the gap. And we also identify that the first three stakeholders are within our reach to influence them to communicate and align the interest, whereas the competitors, the ability, the ability to mitigate is much lower. Now, so now that we understand the nature of these stakeholders, we take a look at the solution we have for these stakeholders. First being for the customer, given that they are afraid that we might be raising the fee, one of the ways to do so is to establish a sales force in order to pitch to these small business owners and to make sure that we are still maintaining the fee level. And we also want to further communicate with these customers through an email loop to communicate and push new updates on this profile. Moving on, as for the shareholders, we believe the best way to signal the growth engine is through communicating this value through a shareholder meeting. And this is why we propose you to establish a clear KPI of what you want to achieve per year to these shareholders. Lastly, with regards to the CEO themselves, given that he has trouble in managing his time or managing the publicity work, we believe the best way to do is to establish a PR manager to help manage that the company is in good shape in communicating to the public, as well as allowing the CEO more time to manage the time and spend time with the employees. And that's our second strategy of, you know, of Engage, where we try to align the interest across all stakeholders. Now, we take a step further because we do recognize that given that we're expanding and we are raising the pay of the employees, it is important that we obtain a secure and sustainable source of financing. And that's our third strategy comes in of Enable. To craft the right source of financing, we have to first understand what they are, what are the options at hand. We identified four, which is the owner capital, internally generated fund, investor capital, as well as the debt obligation. As for the owner capital, given the limited nature of that, we believe that we have to be, be able to best manage the constraints. Moving further, in terms of internal cash flow, we believe that this is very limited and very depends pretty much on the performance of the company. Third of all, as for the equity holder, although we'll be able to get access to a wider pool of investors, 
however, the Kant is in terms of the dilution of shared as well as the dilution of control. Lastly, in terms of debt obligation, given that the company right now is in the state of venture capital, it means that obtaining debt financing might not be the most feasible option. Now, to select the right financing sources, we have to understand the financing timeline of your company right now, as well as the growth prospect moving forward. And as you can see here, we, I have identified the financing timeline for your company. As of now, you are a venture capital firm at the stage that you are required internally generated fund as well as the inter investor capital. And this is where we recommend the company to obtain further source of financing through approaching venture capital to, up to obtain more equity and inject those funds in expanding. However, looking forward, we believe that as the company continues to grow, new and better modes of financing might come in place, for example, debt financing in the future. And that is how we craft the financing timeline as well as choosing the right financing sources. So if our strategies of enrich, engage, and enable are successfully implemented, we expect that we'll be able to create the valuation of the company reaching 26 million in the next five years. With our key assumptions of first, the company could sustain the revenue growth at around 15%. Second, the margin of pro uh, profit is considered to be around 6%. And lastly, company expected with an average cost of capital is, expect, is expected to be around 20%. And to ensure the success of our strategy, we have constructed an implementation timeline, which for the first strategy of Enrich, the internal communication should begin right away. And we hope that the performance evaluation setup, as well as the growth um, development career should begin concurrently at the second quarter of the next year. And for the second strategy of Engage, the sales agent hire should seek right away as well. And we hope that it should be followed by approaching each customer directly at the second quarter of next year. And lastly, for the enable strategy, we hope that the company should do the financial analysis at the first quarter of the year. And then we hope that to follow it by measuring as well as set up the evaluation form. And as we know that no strategy is perfect, therefore we have conducted a risk and a mitigation plan where we have prioritized our risk based on the severity of risk as well as the, uh, the probability of occurrence. We have also identified the ability to mitigate as well as the mitigation plan, which in this case, the greatest risk presents to be the uh, uh, dissatisfied of the managers, which we could mitigate it by intensifying the non-monetary program, such as the job rotation, a career growth, or the uh, internal discussions feedback. And our second greatest uh, risk present to be the uh, the undervaluation of our company, which could, which could, we could mitigate it by increase our top line of the company's revenue, as well as minimize our costs that could occur in the company. So what have we done today? So currently, your company is a credit card possessive company whom is struggling to manage its pay as well as expanding its operations. However, we envision a better tomorrow where your company will become a company who is ensuring a wider quality in payment as well as securing a sustainable financing source for your expansion. And to bridge this gap, we present to you our triple E strategy of enrich, engage, and enable. Our enrich strategy focuses on monetary and non-monetary compensations for our employees. Our engaged strategies focus on aligning the interests of all stakeholders. And lastly, our enabled strategy focus on obtaining a secure financing source for our company. With this, we believe that we will be able to help Red Organic become a company who will be able to grow and sustain a will be able to grow and sustain its company. Thank you, and now we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Maybe I'll start. Um, okay, just one quick question. Um, the increase of minimum pay from 70 to 70K, um, do you think that was a good or bad decision, and what did it achieve? So from what we see, 
in the CEO's perspective, he believed that he is doing a one of the greatest decision for his employees by allowing them to have much more payment, which he believed will incentivize them to work better as well as reduce the stress, which will increase the efficiency of the company. From our perspective, we see that if it's possible at that time, the rate should not have been as high. It may be done in trenches, for example, increasing by one, um, 10,000K and then go on and increase further. However, now that the CEO have already established this scheme and it has been publicized to the public, we believe that it is not possible for us to, um, to eliminate this strategy. So just to add on that, now that we have increased the base pay to over 70K, what we realized was the fact that it created three key problems. The first is in terms of the fact that both the monetary and the non-monetary is not being maximized yet. The fact that the other stakeholders are not being aligned with their values yet. And the fact that there's also present a problem in terms of future funding. And ultimately, that's where our three recommendations comes in. The enrich, uh, engage. engage, and uh, so uh, you're saying that uh, we are at where we are and we cannot go that back. So how do you plan on the monetary fund, the enriched strategy, where you want to segregate people by different type of work stage, work they do and make the compensation based on that. Yeah. So what are you going to do? You're going to keep the base pay 70 and over the strategy on top of that? Yeah. So we are looking to keep the base pay at 70K but what we realized was the fact that doing this would really hurt your bottom line. So we want to also add some sort of uh, strategies that would help. Uh, so we, so that's why ultimately we want to recommend them not just to do the base salary, but to do commissions and what bonuses. Do do with the base salary? So from what we see is that currently, um, Try to uh, make ourselves to be a lean company. 
So we can see that we do, will be growing pretty fast in the next upcoming year. So we can see that by having like a higher um, salary uh, pay, we expect uh, a high performance from each employer as well. So we can see that we can leverage on like on the current or existing um, employees that we have, and then let them have, uh, let them become more efficient in doing the work for our growth in the next upcoming year. So I think just to add on that, we're not looking to further increase the number of employees, but through our uh, uh, strategies today, we're looking to increase the productivity of each of our employees. And ultimately, we believe that that will be the main engine of growth. So just in general, um, the main uh, conclusion out of all the, all the analysis is that you were still quite supportive for the decision of the CEO to raise the minimum salary, right? But just somehow you need to better do that at a point on the other employees. Yeah, precisely, precisely. And also, would you mind just to go back to the slide on the external and on the internal parties? Um, I realize that you put CEO as external. Why the CEO is external? Is it employee? One of the employee as well, so the CEO is actually internal. So please allow me to explain on this. So in terms of external, we classify it in that terms for this presentation because we're talking about how it is communicating to the public, which is why we believe that um, in order for us to better manage both the company and the PR relation, a PR with the public, we will be um, hiring a new PR manager who will be taking care of all the external problems that, sorry, all the external obligations that the companies have with the press, while the CEO will now be able to move and work on the internal parts of the company. Um, the, the company is a um, famous hand. Uh, within this industry, what do you think is the main, you know, biggest competitive advantage? How do you win customers over your com competitors? I think to answer that question, you have to first understand the ecosystem of the of the of the cash processing industry, and we believe that in order to obtain the competitive advantage. We have to secure, first of all, we have to be able to have uh, a large access to the number of vendors in the market We have to, so that you can grow your ecosystem. Second of all, we have to make sure that the banks who are card issuer are actually, are actually prefer to use you as a payment processor. And lastly, I think it also comes in terms of how well you can actually set up a POS terminal at least of the merchant and overall grow in the ecosystem moving forward. I'm on this side. Uh, so, um, you mentioned uh, where you work and what is uh, very uh, good concept. Uh, how many people does, does this company have? The company currently has 120 employees. So, how, what's the possibility of somebody growing vertically? For how long can somebody grow vertically? And then you also classified your uh, type of uh, um, employees into those four categories, okay? Are those specialist roles? How, how fungible are skill sets across that? So, have you looked at that? Please allow me to play the first question with regards to the vertical growth opportunity. Because we do recognize that it's not just about growth, vertical growth, because the company will only sustain to a certain level of number of employees to, to be promoted. So, that is why our horizontal growth opportunity comes in, whereby there's a job rotation to really encourage and, and influence these employees to feel that that's why they are not getting a promotion, they are still learning, and there are significant learning opportunities within, within the firm for them to in order to grow. Please not answer my question. How are you going to get a web designer to be a sales person, or a sales person to be a web designer? So please allow me to explain. So when we do the job rotation, we will be doing across different departments which, which employees need the same skill sets. For example, the sales side and the customer relationship side, we see that these two um, side of the employees need to have similar skill set to communicate to the customers to um, and understand the product and communicate these products to the customers. And so we will be rotating these customers um, from their departments. And in terms of product development, we also understand that the company has other functions such as the technical functions, uh, which we believe that we will be able to rotate them since those, um, those jobs are much closely related. And to add on to my colleague, that's one of the success case study of uh, Microsoft company, that they can they enable the employees to rotate each job if the employees are willing to, and it's very successful.
example, if you are in the marketing uh, department, you can move on to IT. But the company will provide you with the a basic background education to make sure that the employee will be able to fit in that department. The pension is only for the junior staff? In terms of the rotation, we want to specifically target these strategies at the ju uh, more junior level because we do realize that when it comes to higher level, it requires more specialization within each of those expertise areas. Okay, when, when I look back on this case, it says customers were predominantly small business owners. As a small business owner buying service from Clavity, what do you think that their main concerns are? You know, they are, you know, mainly payment handlers, you know, why do they go to Gravity? Well, you know, they're only small business. You mean their main concern with our strategy? No, no, just in general, when they look yeah. for a payment handler, why, why do they actually come to Gravity? Why don't they go to someone else? What's the main reason? What's your USP in the market? Yeah. What's our? Unique selling point in the Unique market. Selling point. Why do they come to you? I think one of the reasons that maybe SME shoes us because maybe sometimes it is not attractive enough for like the big acquirer like Visa to come and, and cooperate and contract with this SME. So we're the one who bridge this gap and taking all these opportunities as small opportunities. Yes, I understand that. But there are many of these similar companies similar to Gravity. Why Gravity and not someone else? I think from my understanding, it's the fact that the company currently charges a relatively low fee to the yeah, industry. You put it on now, yeah. relatively low fee. With this increase in salary, can you maintain this relatively low fee compared to your competitors? So we understand that by increasing the salary, it would be very difficult to maintain the low fee. However, what we would be trying to do is um, from these from the seventy k, we have seventy k scheme. We have obtained large publicity with the um, public, and we have obtained a lot of new customers so we believe that we will be communicating positive PRs from the company in order to try to attract more um, more customers in order to compensate this by increasing the volume not the price of what we're charging so I think just to add on that the regarding the fees we believe that although it may be very difficult we still believe that we can maintain that because mainly because of the fact that through increasing the pay we'll be able to increase the productivity and therefore employees will be able to acquire more customers to compensate for the loss and the increase of salary. Are you going to uh, effectively pay the same amount of the fee that you're not giving? You're going to ask the employees to work harder, longer hours? I say you work more efficient in the way that we expect it. So the, what are the inefficiencies that you identified in the current structure? I think given the current structure of the company, most of the employees feel that they may not have sufficient responsibility or sufficient work to do within the firm. So we believe that that's a gap we can truly tackle. And, and from what is the, why do you think that, what, what gives you that uh, impression? Well, based on my understanding, based on the case material, there are certain interviews or statements from the employees because some already left the firm because they feel that they are getting paid, but they're not getting any work that will compensate that challenge in, in the colonization. Because that, that's a sales statements and administrator. So are you going to get an administrator to work at the sales manager? I, I'm trying to understand what is your thought process. Why do you think there are inefficiencies? What are those inefficiencies and how are you addressing them? I think one of the things that the case written very clearly was the fact that from its original stage and after the fact that have increased the pay, employees are much more happy. And they did mention that there were rooms for in increasing efficiency and ultimately that's why we believe that there were inefficiencies in the first place and the fact that there are room to further increase and to add on to Michael, I think one of the, the things that we want this company, we want to set up the atmosphere company to be the company that everyone wants to come and join. And with everyone that has like a very good skill and, and a very effective people, for example, anyone who go join with Google has to be very clever, very lucky and have lots of happy. And we will we'll try to promote that. How much money this company made in profits last year? Um, currently, they, they're, make, they're a startup company and they're currently making 2.2 million US dollars. And this is, and how many double this at least? 30 percent. 30 percent. 30 percent. Okay, so that's one four. So you effectively have to increase productivity for the 30 people to 100 percent to maintain the same margins for the same time, right? Do you think it's doable? Um, for our analysis, we, we still think that it's doable because looking at the, the perspective of the, the, like, the processor's market, there's still like an opportunity out there which you really 
believe that there's still a lot of small uh, SME shops out there we could go and acquire. And we still believe that with the upcoming technology that we have, we'll be able to come up with the new product. And since we're a small company, we'll be able to, like, we, we're, we, have, we are very flexible. So maybe we can introduce like, a very interesting product that can offer to like, our new customers. Also, there's a one, um, one direct um, effect um, just following this change of meaning slightly. So I think the company currently is running cash flow. So also the VC is good at quite low valuation. So in this situation, if you really need your funding for the company, what's your alternative? I mean, it might not be a good moment to 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 right to 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 engage the VC if they give you quite a low valuation. Okay. So what we believe is that um, even though currently there's a, a low valuation, but as as we have mentioned, that the case already stated that there's still like an upcoming opportunity, which we have seen that by including and implementing our strategy, we could have a high valuation. So, so your concern is that the, the current situation or like in the, the yeah, next we need to solve the current problem first. Uh, I see. Okay. So currently we see that one of the things that is diminishing our uh, bottom line is that there are certain costs that have to be covered before the profit, before the revenue can translate to the profit. So we believe that as the company move on, as the as we cover those costs, as we're able to generate more revenue, we will be able to increase the bottom line of the company, which will eventually increase the valuation of our company. Then when we're able to obtain a valuation that we're satisfied with, we will then approach these VCs and ask for equity. But so you're not going to go to VC right now? No. Okay, last question. Uh, you've uh, given uh, two percentages, 13% revenue growth, 6% margins. Where did you get that from? Um, actually, the case has has not stated that in, in in the in the case. But however, we have taken it from like the and, and industry average and what from what we understand and what we have learned. So basically, we have done cases in Visa and MD form. So we have some certain understanding regarding the credit card purchasing business. And the expected growth is expected to be around ten percent. But this is a small company, so we expect around fifteen percent. 